All right. In my opinion, what happened next was not the best match of the night. It was the only match of the night, at least that I saw. I miss Serena and Riho. But Anthony Agogo and Cody Rhodes was the only wrestling match they had on this show. Uh, and I, you know, I know what we've been talking about um, with Cody mentally and the promos and the Brandy influence and whatever. And he comes out in a costume that Lady Gaga would wear to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. Uh, that I'm sure Tony Khan is spending the money for all these new outfits that all these guys are getting. Um, Cody was also announced as a father to be. Is that the first time in history that any professional wrestler has been announced as a father to be? Yes. I guess that's being a father to be is better than being a son of a bitch. But regardless, I've never heard it in an, in an introduction. Um, I was ready to say, boy, this fucking Agogo, they've rushed him. Anthony Agogo is now my favorite fucking guy in, I think, in AEW. I did not in any way think he was going to be this good or be able to hang in there. And yes, Cody put it, set the match up, put it together and was calling it. <clears throat> that doesn't take a genius to understand that because Anthony Agogo's had like three matches in front of people probably, but this was good and he held his end up. Um, Right at the right at the start of the thing, after a little flurry, a, a go go got the gut shot. I wish they'd do something with the name, but a go go got the gut shot, and a quick angle slam and a quick two count, and that way Cody could come back, but he could keep selling the ribs through the match. And if you notice, a go go here is second match or third match or whatever is in front of people. He's 10 times better already than Caesar Bonanno or whatever his fucking name is. Or, um, I, I really, he was in the right place for everything. He was hitting the stuff. There were no big fuck ups. This was serious, serious and fairly logical. And they left room for things to breathe. I, I don't know how a go, go got busted open. He was bleeding somehow. And then Cody made a big comeback, but, a go go knocks him off the ropes. The frog splash. Fuck this guy. Who would have thought a boxer could do a great frog splash? Um, Cody got the fucking figure four, and a go go reversed it awfully easy. That that seemed a little abrupt. Um, a go go hit a KO shot, but fucking Cody was in the ropes. And right as I was saying, boy, this is starting to slow down. They really should go immediately. Cody hit whatever the fucked up deal was that he did that. What do they call it? Homicide used to do something like that. He he, he started calling it the cop killer in Ring of Honor. But when we were sold to Sinclair and went on television, I said, rename that. But whatever the fuck it was, the upside down thing. Boom. One, two, three. So Cody beats him. But to me, Anthony Agogo was the star of the night. And this was the match of the night because it was the only thing that made sense, looked good, was serious, approached resembling professional wrestling. And if I was Cody, I might have put this guy over instead of beating him. But otherwise than that, this was... This could have been anywhere. It didn't deserve to be on an AEW show. This match and little business could have been on any anybody's show anywhere, and it wouldn't have been anything wrong with it. What would you think? I certainly didn't like it the way you did. I thought it was okay, nothing great. It stood out that it was so different than the rest of the show, but you say it was the only wrestling match there. It stood out because it was nothing like anything else on the show, and I don't think that's good that a match, a segment, is so different than everything else. I wasn't as into it as you were. I but was... now, wait a minute. Why? So, basically, because everybody else has shitty matches, they're supposed to go out and have a shitty match? No, it's different styles. That's what you just said. But I don't think the match was as good as you do. I'm not a fan of... 
It wasn't a it wasn't a great match. Oh, Gogo certainly showed a lot, and I I was gonna say before you said it before, I think Ogogo should have gone over, unless you're gonna tell me they're doing something major with Cody that required this quick feud. This was quick. You know, there's a rumor going around that the only reason this was done is because Cody needed to get something on TV using the American Dream gimmick because he's had so many problems with the patent and trademark office because he's been trying to trademark the American Dream, which he has no rights to. His dad was the American Dream. Cody wasn't. So now he did this on TV. Maybe that's why. But the whole feud, you know, if it if it had just been a match and a feud instead of built up to all of this where he has to come out with all of his team and it's America versus England for no good reason. And QT Marshall and his group have kind of become like team Taz. Like they can't shoot straight. Yeah. So I didn't like this and I've not seen anything I've liked with Cody in a very long time. Well, I got to disagree because I didn't say it was a great wrestling match. I said they did a great he, job. He fucking knocks out multiple guys within a few weeks. Cause we just learned who he was. With that gut punch, he hits go Cody with the gut punch. What within the first forty five seconds of the match, and Cody kicks out. It it wasn't a good <laughs> gut shot. He didn't get all of it. <laughs> all I'm saying is, we can't expect great wrestling matches from this company because they refuse to have them, and the booker doesn't know how to book them. But I will give credit where credit is due when a match takes place where both guys are serious about it. The thing makes sense from start to finish, even with your gut shot analogy there. They, they left some room for things to breathe. They didn't run off and leave everybody doing every goddamn cheerleading routine they've ever heard of or seen. But you, know and, the problem, you know, part of the problem is I would like to see Cody with a real booker. Because I think Cody has elements that work really well, but I also think Cody's his own worst enemy in a lot of ways. And Cody sees himself and Brandy in a way that other fans don't necessarily see them, or a larger portion of the fans don't see them. I would love to see Cody and the skills that he has being directed by a booker as opposed to Cody workshopping his things and focus grouping them <laughs> and trying to put something together that way. I'd rather see him just one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Dusty worked with Watts. Dusty yes. probably wouldn't have taken off to the level he did in Florida without Watts as the booker there. And well, and Watts worked with Graham. That's and right. And Graham worked with Funk. And, and do you remember the story? Bill Watts gets hired by Eddie Graham to come in and be the booker in Florida. You know, he had just been in Georgia, got a piece of the office for the war. He's now in Florida. Right away, he gets there in Dusty Rhodes. I forget what it was either. He openly complained about a finish or he changed a finish. And Bill Watts says to Eddie, he goes, I'm going to fire him. He goes, you're going to fire him? He goes, yeah, I'm going to fire him. I'm going to fire him. He can't do that. And Dusty thought he could because he realized he was a big star. He hadn't turned baby face yet. And then he brought Dusty in the room and Eddie was there. And he said, Dusty, sorry to do this. I think you're a great talent, but you're fired. I can't have you doing that. I'm sure Watts said it more colorfully than I am. Right. And Dusty got very apologetic. And he said it would never happen again. And Watts gave him another chance. And it never happened again. And he knew how to keep Dusty in check because when Dusty was on his own, sometimes as Booker, his ego got out of check. And I think Cody, it's the same thing. Cody has skills. Cody needs someone to harness them as opposed to him trying to harness them himself using, hey, Arn, what do you think of this? Dustin, what do you think of this? QT, you've never done a promo anyone gave a fuck about. What do you think of this? <laughs> That's the problem. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And it, it, the illustration that you just made fits the entire wrestling business before what's happened when you said well so-and-so worked with a good booker to be able to it, it's like an actor working with a good director or it's like a football player working with a good coach or whatever yes the the guy has the natural talent but the person with more experience and who is smarter with looking at the big picture and how to put everybody together he needs to mold that guy. And then it, it, there's nobody molding here because they're molding. All right. They're very moldy, but it's just all a bunch of guys coming up with ideas and doing whatever the fuck. And, and it doesn't fit as a show and it doesn't fit with them. And, and, and as you mentioned with Cody, he's all over the place because he comes up with ideas, but it's like a, a fucking toddler with ADD. Remember when he was in a pull apart with the, one of the Lucha brothers, because he, 
mentioned he was going to hurt his arm so he couldn't hold his baby? Penta. And then the next week he beat him on TV and that was the end of that. That was the end of that. I mean, there's been a lot of things like that with Cody. And I mean, that's the thing. He has skills. But I think he needs someone to understand, okay, week one, you're going to do a great promo. Week two, you can't disappear off TV. Or you got to actually do a promo and not get interrupted right away because we've seen that happen five times. Like Cody has skills. That's part of the frustration. Cody has skills. But Cody isn't the one who should be directing him. And that's where those comparisons to Jeff Jarrett and Triple H come from. Cody is in charge of Cody. And I think it creates problems. And I'll be honest with you. Um, I guess probably the best training program to be in at this point for lack of any better program is the performance center. I, I wish they'd have snatched up a go-go and heard about him or whatever, because he, if this is just him in his first couple of matches, he's got a ton of fucking potential. And I hate to see it'll never be realized because he has nobody to teach him how to think about the business there. He's going to have a bunch of people telling him how to do moves. Um, QT. I mean, no disrespect to QT. I'm sure QT is really good at teaching a guy what to do in the ring, but why to do things in the ring. Is QT that guy? Is QT that guy to teach no. him how to get himself over in promos or how to get himself over in the ring? I mean, that's, that's the issue. And I think, you know, they have their guys, you know, Cody and QT have their school. Dustin's now training guys, but I wish there were guys there like Rip Rogers, Les Thatcher's guys who could explain why you do things and what the, objective is as opposed to here's a bunch of moves 